I've got updates on the tiny brains. If you are not familiar with brain organoids, they are tiny human brains that we can grow from stem cells. You can grow them in a literal jar if you want to, but you can also hook them up to a computer or LLM. Since a company called Final Spark decided to release brain organoid computation for industrial use, there has been an explosion in research in figuring out how to make them better processors. And yes, those are real eyes. Granted, they are ocular cups, similar to what you would see in a fetus. We'll talk about it. All of it. As far as we know, the first brain organoids were grown out of a lab in Kyoto in 2008. Since then, everyone has been trying to put them on a computer chip, and it has progressed significantly. In 2022, a company called Cortical Labs announced to the world that they believed the brain organoids were sentient. This was based on the fact that they could hook them up to a computer chip and they could learn how to play Pong. Now, sentience is the ability to have a sensation and then react to it. Not only did the brain organoids demonstrate that they could learn, but they're also capable of sensation. Rather, they're capable of having a feeling and then responding to that feeling. In the case of the early brain organoid computation, it was based on ordered and disordered signals. They could send signals to them and receive what came back. They could receive that information and use it. They were capable of learning to play Pong faster and better than AI systems just three years ago. Now, Final Spark took it to a whole new level. They found out you could train the brains on dopamine. So when they made electrical output, that would trigger a machine to give them a little jolt of it. In that way, they became addicted to actually solving our problems for us and doing computation. Along with Cortical Labs, they also embodied them in a game world. They gave it a virtual body. In this case, multiple brain organoids ran a butterfly simulation. That simulation is not up right now, but I have made a video on it. There has been a lot of limitations to not just growing them, but being able to keep them alive and running a computer system. Because they are disembodied, they lack a circulatory system, and they're developing independently of a skull they would normally develop in. As a result, our little friends end up dying of hypoxia, although there has been a lot of research now in keeping them alive for longer. Using a gel diffusion system, where media is constantly cycled out, they have managed to keep them alive for a year or more. As they develop, they do look very much like a fetal human brain, although teeny tiny. We're talking micrometers here. And yes, the longer that they are kept alive, the more that their gene expression and brain waves resemble a premature baby. But do remember, just because we're talking about something that may resemble that brain on tests, we're talking about something that is like a thousand micrometers across. I feel like I'm ethically required to tell you guys that they're not conscious until they can demonstrate the abstract concept of self. When I've talked to researchers about this, they can't help but mention to me that no, they're not comparable to a baby, although babies are also not conscious. They only have delta brain waves until around the time they're naturally born. So premature babies essentially have the brain waves of a coma patient, and assuming all goes well, they'll eventually develop to where they should be. Researchers generally think this is really freaking cool, but it tends to creep everyone out. I'd like to remind you, Yes, those are eyes. The most effective way of keeping a brain organoid alive, and is also one of the things that I would love to see more of, is using them to treat stroke patients. There has been a good deal of success with treating simulated strokes in mice with human brain organoids being transplanted. They will grow, they will integrate, and there's even been some research using them in monkeys. Damaged monkey brain, tiny human brain, put in there to repair a stroke. This would be an amazing treatment in humans, but it is again, the most effective way to keep one alive. Now, Final Spark, yes, the company that is selling these guys computation as a subscription model for $500 a month, also partnered with a number of labs around the world to research different aspects of the use of human brain organoids in computation. And we are just starting to see the products of that. This lab came out of University of California and Kyoto, and they managed to figure out how to take a complex human brain organoid and put it into a computer. If you look back at this picture, you may notice a few things. It's really small, it's relatively flat, 
and it doesn't have the complex brain structures that we can see in other brain organoids. While you can grow multiple structures in the same brain organoid, it's kind of difficult without, you know, the whole body to grow it in. One possible solution is to grow separate parts and assemble them. And I'm slightly entertained that this research group called them Lego-like bricks. This is great if you're doing medical research trying to figure out how, say, drugs would affect the brain. Not the greatest thing to use if you're trying to make it into a computation model. Getting it oxygen and keeping it alive is a lot more complicated if it's more complex, so they usually only use one kind of brain tissue. There's also the issue of communicating with it. While yes, you can train it on things like dopamine or ordered or disordered signals, that's not very helpful if you have to receive that information and you've got a three-dimensional structure. I've seen some research groups that grow them in kirigami baskets, so they have some three-dimensional interactions with the organoid. Still, it's difficult to work with. This group decided to create a three-dimensional little box to store a brain organoid in, and they have multiple outputs and inputs so they can communicate with the entire brain structure. This would allow them to have increasingly complex brain organoids to work with. As the technology develops, we'll probably develop better ways to get them oxygen than diffusion. I have seen quite a lot of work with vascularizing them using vascular organoids. Still lacks a heart, and we would need to do something like ECMO, and we know that ECMO is very hard on little human brains. If perfected, I wonder if we couldn't end up one day with something that is more complicated than a human brain. Already, human brains are the best in the business, better than any computer that we have. There may even be quantum dynamics going on in our brains. It is kind of cool that we conscious pieces of the universe are trying to understand ourselves, and now we are trying to recreate ourselves in piecemeal. The one thing you should be asking yourself is what about the ethics of it? This is a completely new field. I don't think anyone ever considered ethics of how we would get here. We have rules for human experimentation. We have rules for animals. We do not have rules for disembodied human organs grown in a lab. I think we'll get one of three, maybe four outcomes to this research. One, it'll be so good, it'll be integrated everywhere. We might find that people don't actually want to feed their computers fish flakes, and it might just not be worth it. It might just be easier to make quantum computers than try to integrate human brains. Third option is maybe we'll all decide that this was a horribly unethical idea and we never should have done it, and it'll be seen as a horror of scientific history, like many things have become. Perhaps the most unlikely result is that they'll end up gaining consciousness and work with AI to take over the world and destroy us all. I think that is highly unlikely, but anything's possible. In addition to being a researcher myself, granted I don't work with this stuff, I work as soil, I do find this stuff really fascinating, extremely creepy, but I love sci-fi and I love horror and I think I've been in a little bit of disbelief that this actually managed to happen. What do you think?